Hey guys, welcome back. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, you're gonna be checking out I made that. Answers Does God require Jesus' blood to forgive us? Guys, let's get straight into this. I've been so fascinated with everything you've been saying. I'd love to sit down and talk to you, but I feel that this is the closest opportunity I'll get to do that. So um, I had to narrow my many questions down to this one. Um, does, does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? And if so, how do we know that? What is, what is God's promise to us? That How does he provide that promise? I'll answer that. And, okay. I'll answer that. When you say, and, you see now, this is an old machine. Old machine. So when I'm answering one, I forget the other. And then you might think that I try to hoodwink the people and you. So hmm. therefore, if you ask one question at a time, you'll be more merciful to me. <laughs> then you take a chance, another one, and another one, I don't mind. Till 12 o'clock tonight, I'm at your disposal. Okay. But if you can just one at a time, so it makes it easy for me. Please. Okay. Right. Okay. Do, does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? Yes. That forgiveness of sin is, you sincerely repent of the wrongs that you have done. God forgives. He does not need blood, the blood of animals or of mankind, no blood. He says in the Holy Bible, he says in the book of Isaiah, he said, I forgive sins for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. What he wants from you is come to him, sincerely make an effort and forgive. And the parable in the Bible, the prodigal son, if you remember, prodigal son in the Gospel of St. Luke, prodigal son, father, a father had two sons. Who is the father in this parable? God. He is the father. He's got two sons. Means two types of his creation. One was who remains with the father. You know, prays, does everything, nice, good chap, goody, goody, good fellow. The other fellow, like most of us, he says, look, dad, give me my inheritance, what belongs to me, my talents, all the talents, give it to me, and I will make into the world and fend for myself. And the loving father said, all right, I know it's not good for you, but since you asked for it, have it, there, take it. And the son took it, which we all take. See, the talents. He's given us a lot of talents. And he went out into the world, as the gospel describes, and met bad company, mixed with bad company, became a drunkard and what and not, maybe had AIDS and everything. He's lying in the gutter, you know, missing his pants. Now in that condition, he realizes that he would have been better off if he was with the father. So he makes a comeback. He makes a comeback. And the father sees him from afar, says the gospel. And the father runs to the son. He says, this my son was dead, is now alive. He was lost, is now found. He wasn't dead. Spiritually he had departed. So that was death. He was lost spiritually. Now he's found. So he embraces the son, welcomes him and tells the other son, he said, look, sacrifice the fatted calf that we may celebrate the return of the prodigal. Whose calf? Whose calf was that? The father's. See, the father out of his bounty, he makes the sacrifice. He is not asking his son, he said, look, you squandered all my talents, all my wealth. Now you go and stay with the swines, the pigs, in the pigsty for seven years. Look after the pigs and after that I'll give you promotion to the sheep and, and the cows before you come into the house. That is not God. That's Shylock. Shylock talks like that. God Almighty, you make a sincere effort to return. He says, come, welcome. No price asked, no blood, no sacrifice. If he says, sacrifice is called for, it is own. Out of his own goodness, he says, I'm prepared to celebrate. He celebrates your homecoming. And the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, tells us the very same situation, same principle. He says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Means you who do wrong, you'll perish. Unfortunately, in Christian literature, there's a full stop. No Christian literature ever completes the verse. They put a full stop. Where there's no full stop, they put a full stop. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. And they say, all have sinned, and so they have fallen short of the glory of God. Everybody perishes. No, no, please, continue. It's a semicolon there in the King James Version. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Father Adam sinned. We his children, we will not bear that iniquity. 
Neither shall the father be the iniquity of the son. The son shall not be the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father be the iniquity of the son. His son, Adam's son, we, his children. Last June, in San Francisco, 300,000 sodomites, you call them gays, they gathered on a pilgrimage led by 50 lesbians on motorcycles. God will not ask Adam, he said, look at your children, that's all right. what are they doing? <laughs> They're going to get AIDS. They'll get AIDS. No, God won't ask Adam. See, this is the law of God. He says, the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. And the righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. The good thing, the good man... Guys, this logic, I don't believe it. Because I believe that we are still paying for the sins of Adam and Eve. If we were supposed to be in the Garden of Eden, like, we lost that glory. Like, our father, that's it. Like, if I commit a crime today and I was locked up in a cell and I kind of have a child, the sin and the stigma of me being a criminal is still going to be in my child. Like, that's it. What I do affects my child and what my child do also affects me in a way. Because I feel there's, there's every, like... Anything you do, there's a repercussion. Like, there's a repercussion for everything you do. So, if I cut my son's leg, or I... Like, it's somehow for you to say that we are not paying for the sins of Adam, because we are. If we are going to be at the Garden of Eden, and women... You know, remember when God sent them out? God said that men were, were going to toy the soil before we eat, and women are going to pass through pain um in order for them to give birth so you see it's still happening to date and remember when god blessed abraham god said i will be the father of all nations and abraham is the father of all nations the blessing is with us so you wouldn't say that it was written in the bible though but like it's still written like i say the bible is the bible is unique i'll say i'll say that because you, you can see this and you see that. Like, it, I don't know how I will explain. The Bible is like life. Like, you just can't say, if you are doing good, doing good, doing good, doing good, no harm is going to come to you. Like, harm is still going to come to you. Like, that is what life is like. The Bible is like life. I will feel like that. Guys, let's get back into this. Does, God says he'll get his reward. And the wicked fellow does wicked things, he will be punished. Way of salvation. Is there? He said, but if the wicked will turn, means repent, come back. But if the wicked will turn from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. That is salvation. You come back, you come back where God wants you to be. You ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. He's not like Shylock, yes. wanting a pound of flesh from you. He doesn't do that. He forgives sins for his own sake, not for your sheep and goats and Christ. Nothing. He wants nothing. He wants, needs no blood. He wants you, your sincere effort, wanting to come back. This is salvation. We're not trying to offend nobody, we're trying to have you think. And there's a lot of people out there who are like, you know what, I'm going through the same thing. So they just, just you know, uh, brush it off and whatnot. Let's talk about, because I think if we help them to see how, by using their brain, they can see how Islam is so rational and pure, it's the natural way. But this, these man-made ideologies, philosophies, these are things that we should stand and criticize and be like, hold on, this is not from the Creator. Tell us, why do you think so many people fall to feeling that, and is it possible that somebody can die for your sins? This whole idea hmm. that somebody is going to pay the price and now I can just do whatever I want or whatever the case. Talk to us. I've had a number of uh, conversations with people of Christian faith yeah. um, from various denominations, and the recurring theme of Jesus dying for the sins of those who believe in Him, sins for humanity, and once we accept Him, we're in. Yes. Um, and when I ask them, well, what about your crimes? What about, okay, so uh, and I ask flat out, okay, anybody who accepts Jesus will go to heaven? And they say, yes. I said, okay, well, what if a terrorist accepts Jesus? One who's killed hundreds of people, innocent people. If he accepts Jesus, he's going to he just go, go to, heaven, to heaven, just like that? 
Yes, he doesn't yes. have, I mean, and, and they just say flat out, yes. What, a, what about a rapist? What about a murderer? What about, you know, these, these criminals? What about them? Yeah, all they have to do is they, they believe in Jesus and they're good to go. And even if they were believers before, they messed up, they can come back to Jesus and they're saved again, right? The idea behind it, which seems to be contradictory, is on the one hand, the Christian says that the human being is born in sin. Yeah. He's born in sin. On the other hand, when you talk to Christians about theology and you say, well, if we're born in sin and we're prone to sin, and you're telling me I'm forgiven already, am I, aren't I going to sin more? Because you've given me open license, and I'm, if I do sin, I'll say, hey, I was born that way. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They'll say, no, people are good. If, once they have faith, they're good. I was like, but you said they're born in sin. And now on top of that, you've given them a justification for that sin. You've opened the doors for them. And so you find, the I mean, in, uh, you could speak in theory and say, theoretically speaking, yeah, Christians are supposed to be good, and you know, a good number of them are. But the vast majority of society that claims Christianity does horrendous things with a crucifix hanging from the chest. Or, you know, calling on Jesus here and there, but then also, you know, engaged in, in, in foul sorts of language, right? Yeah. Yes, there are bad Muslims too. There are bad Jews too, and there are good Jews, and there are good Muslims, etc., etc. But the, the mentality that it's produced is one of being able to get away with our behavior. And uh, what this is the psychology of shirk. Basically what it, this is, is a person doesn't want to take responsibility for their own actions. Yeah. So they figure, you know, it's just like kind of like at work. If you have your, your manager is a good friend of yours, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then the boss is mad at you, you know what you do? You tell the manager, hey, talk to him for me. Yeah. I don't want to deal with him. And the manager's kind of got your back, even if you come in late to work or you mess up or whatever. He's got, he's got your back. That's the idea, right? You don't want to deal with the actual person. So here we have violations against God, the Lord of the worlds. The entire psychology is what God loves Jesus so much. If Jesus puts in a good word, we'll be all right. I'm all good. Huh? So I actually don't have to please God. I can continue to spit on the, the, uh, the injunctions of God, what he commands me to do. I can kick them to the curb. And if I am getting in trouble, I'll just get Jesus to put in a good word for me and I'm okay. You got the JC Gold card. You, you, charge it up. Basically. Yeah. So now, and this is actually not just limited to Christianity. Any religion that sets up an intermediary between yourself and God does this. Mm -hmm. That intermediary is there because it's your, your pass into heaven without you taking responsibility, mm -hmm. without you having to stand up for yourself. And we all want the easy way. Exactly. And the other thing this does, and this is very important, one of the very important side effects of Jesus being the means yeah. to save yourself or any other uh, uh, partner, any other uh, intermediary is that you actually don't expect God to forgive you. You don't expect mercy from God. You expect it from, the, God is merciful to him, so he'll show you mercy, but God himself, yeah, he'll destroy you. He'll, he'll destroy, even the Christian believes he's destroyed nations in the past. Yeah. And, so they've actually, on the side kind of, even though they believe the Trinity or, or, or this is all one God, but to them, God is more punishment and Jesus is more forgiveness. Yeah. And they've kind of separated the two. To the Muslim, this is contradiction. If God is all knowledgeable, and He's the creator of all things, and He's the, the absolutely merciful, no one can be more merciful than the one who created everything uh, in the heavens and the earth. But, so we expect mercy from Him. If someone makes a mistake, what does He do? If He makes a sin, we're weak. Okay. Uh, simple answer. Ya, ya uh, ibadi alladhina asrafu ala anfusihim O my slaves that have wronged themselves That have transgressed against their own selves La taqnatu min rahmatillah Don't you dare lose hope in the mercy of Allah Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a No doubt Allah will forgive the sins, all of them What you have to do, what is the path to forgiveness? Number one, sincerely repenting Being ashamed of what you did Number two, promising Allah you won't do it again A commitment not to go back to that sin, repentance and number three, changing your behavior immediately. You change your behavior. You don't repent for a sin, go back to it next week, then repent again and go back next week. Because Allah says, وَلَمْ يُسِرُّوا عَلَى مَا فَعَلُوا وَهُمْ يعلمون. They didn't insist upon what they did while knowing what they were doing. So you can't insist upon your sin. You have to, you have to firmly commit to let go of that sin. And if you're sincere, Allah will help you in walking away from that sin for life. He's the most merciful, the most gracious. He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He's ready to forgive. We turn to we him just have to be ready to ask. Guys, I have a lot. Sorry, 
have a lot to say like okay let's start like it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be strange for some people but let's do this guys if we want to be honest with ourselves like if we look at it if you think you can pay your way to heaven i feel every rich person will make heaven because you being honest yes like i don't feel your good deeds can take you to hell like like that that's the truth like we sin every day and if any of us want to be honest we actually do like sometimes we do things without even knowing is a sin so that aside like why we believe jesus is actually our gateway to heaven because jesus said himself no one commits to my father except through me and jesus says i'm the way the truth and the light like this is not something that christian just brought out by yourself like jesus himself said it so if i'm gonna say jesus didn't say this but clearly said by zaki Nike in one of his videos he said any letter, any writing written with red letter is actually from Jesus, believe in it. So let's listen to someone that's actually big in the Muslim industry and not industry, Muslim like in the Islam world, like he's one of is a person a lot of people look up to and he clearly said, listen to read those letters written with red is for actually from Jesus. He said it in his video and I can bring it out. I actually made the video like two days ago. So I clearly know what I'm saying. So he just said, I'm the way the truth and the light. So no one comments to my father except through me. So that clearly means we need him to like to meet the father. And we believe that we can go to heaven with like us being us. Like we we were born with him. Yes. Because we're born in a based on there's a deceitful earth and based on Adam and Eve and you said the, the, the it's really gonna be hard like it's gonna be hard for me to explain because we believe that parents don't transfer the sin but okay scrap that okay scrap before we're born with sin you just can't make heaven by yourself I'll say this you you need Jesus the son of god because jesus said those who believe in me we enter the kingdom of my father this was written in red letters what zach and i said we should believe so jesus said those who believe in me will enter heaven and god jesus clearly said that if you for the ten commandments you will enter heaven but if you see as i said bible is like life like there's this and there's this there's this and there's this but I don't really want to stress. I wish I first during the video, but a lot of you don't like it. So I have to take time to think. He said something else. Yeah, he made mention of Christians like using Jesus is gonna like I'm forgiving as a gateway to continue sinning. That is actually still written in the Bible, but I don't know the rest. But I, I have clearly read it before once in this lifetime. It it actually said that God is gonna like if you continue sinning, knowing you are sinning, is like I don't really know how to put it. I don't want to fabricate verses, so I'm not going to say anything about that. But I know that that part, like if you sin and you know you are sinning and you continue sinning, just you knowing that Jesus is there to forgive you is is going to count against you, guys. When you say if a terrorist come to jesus and say jesus forgive me for my sin like like you need to be aware of what you did like you need to ask for forgiveness based on what you did like you can't just say jesus forgive me because i have killed a lot of people and the next day you go and continue killing like it does not make sense when you ask god for forgiveness is when you have realized what you are doing is wrong i want to take like you ask him for the mercy for what you have done i ask him for the grace to direct like to change that ways like the ways like you know there's there's a spirit that making you to commit your sin so you ask him to like take that spirit away from you like for you to transform your mindset for you not to commit that sin and for you to come to jesus being a terrorist and it's something that you might have taken your own like like you converting or you reverting like 
you know what I'm doing is wrong. Like, I, this is the path I need to follow. That kind of conversion, like, it's, it's different from me just saying, Jesus, forgive me for I know I've sinned. Then you go back and do it again. But if you come sincerely with open hearts, I believe and it was written, you will be forgiven. God is all merciful and he's going to forgive everyone just sin. As far as you know what you did is wrong and you come back to him, he's going to forgive you. But guys, then what you think about this video? I know I'm going to get a lot of comments, but please be, be, be merciful in the comment section. Guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Best.